There he goes into that drugstore. He's stepping on the scales. Weight, 239 pounds. Fortune, danger. Who is it? The Fat Man. Here's the fat man in Murder Finds a Coffin. Did you ever see a reckless fat man? The kind of guy who goes rushing around taking unnecessary chances? I didn't think so. And the odds are that you never will either. You see, the fellows with the extra weight can't afford to waste energy showing off or trying to do something the easy way. So they learn to be careful and patient. And that's just one more advantage a fat man has in this business of catching criminals. Because when fools rush in to grab a killer, they very often don't come out. I don't, as a rule, like working in my office at night. For one thing, the elevator stops running, and five flights of stairs is no joke. The building's old and gloomy looking, even in the daytime when it's full of people. At night, it's about as cheerful as a morgue and as quiet as a graveyard. The paperwork I was doing was dull and boring. And I was tired when I finished at ten minutes to eleven. I put on my hat, snapped off the lights, and walked to the door. The corridor was dark and quiet. I locked the door. And then I heard it. Far off and faint, but coming closer. Somebody was running down the stairs from the floor above. I walked quietly to the staircase and waited in the shadows. What's the matter? <laughs> What's wrong? Why the hurry? Oh, you... You frightened me. What else scared you? No, I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. Do what? Kill him. Upstairs in his office. He... He was lying on the floor when I opened the door. There's a dead man upstairs? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. Any idea who it is? It's Dirk. Dirk Richard. Somebody shot him. He was lying on the floor of his office. Did you call the police? Oh, no. Oh, no, I couldn't call them. Don't you see that thing? Yeah, I see, all right. You'll think that I can, don't you? But I didn't like him. Oh, you're not going to call the police? Not yet. Come on. Where? Oh, no, you're not going back up. I said, come on. Oh, no, please. Please, I can't go up there. I okay, can't. okay. Then we'll go in my office and call the cops. Oh, no, no. Then shut up and show me this dead guy. All right. But you must help me, please. Where's his office? This explorer. One flatter. What's your name? I'd rather not tell you. Look, sister, if there's a murdered man up here, you're going to be a candidate for the electric chair. But I didn't do it. Okay, what's your name? Sybil Stone. The dead guy, who's he? Our lawyer, Dirk Richards. Our lawyer? Our family. Is that the office, the one with the light on? Yes. They're on the floor above the desk. Yeah. yeah he's dead, all right. Was the body lying face down like this when you found it? Yes. You didn't touch anything? Of course not. Tell me what happened. When I got here, the light was on. I opened the door. And there, there he was on the floor. Well, that's all. I, I was frightened. So I turned and started running down the stairs. Isn't 11 o'clock at night a funny time to call in a lawyer? Oh, you don't believe me, do you? You think I shot him, but I didn't. Oh, listen, you've got to believe. You've got to help me. You're in a tough spot, baby. I, I haven't got a gun. I, I couldn't have shot you, don't you see? Yeah, maybe. Then you don't believe me. You don't think I killed him. I don't know. In a minute, I'm going to have to call the cops and tell them about this guy. I may be a sap, but I think you're telling the truth. Oh, then you will help me. You won't tell the police. Yeah, I'm going to help you. 
You see, this guy here wasn't shot at all. Somebody stabbed him. Uh, why, Miss Stone, Hi, I... sir. My brother Wade and my cousin George. Did, did you give them my message? Why, no, Miss Stone. Uh, neither of them has come home yet. I see. You don't know where they went? No, I don't know where either of them went. We'll wait until they come in. Yes. Uh, won't you sit down, Mr. Runyon? Uh -huh. I think it's okay, Christopher. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir? The picture, it doesn't need straightening. It's a little late at night for house cleaning, anyway. I, I don't understand, sir. That will be all, Christopher. Yes, Miss Stone. Now then, let's have a little more light on this subject. What do you mean? What were you doing in your lawyer's office at 11 o'clock at night? Well, uh, Dirk phoned here about 10 o'clock tonight. He, he was excited, said it was something about the money and Uncle Caleb's will. He wanted us to come to his office right away. You, your brother, and this cousin? Yes. You see, we three are the only ones left in the family. Both Wade, my brother, and my cousin George were out, so I left word with Christopher for them to come to Dirk's office, and I went on alone. You know what happened there. What's this about a will and the money? It's my Uncle Caleb's will. He was my father's only brother, and he lived in Australia. My father never spoke of him, and... I gather there must have been some sort of trouble between them. What sort of trouble? Oh, I don't know, but whatever it was, he must have forgotten about it after Father's death. Why do you say that? Well, it was right after uh, B.J. Day that we got the letter from Uncle Caleb. He said he was getting old and that he was sick. His life had been lonely and his only living relatives were my brother and I and my cousin. He said he realized that his death was near and he had a lot of money. He had made a will to be opened one year after his death in which he was leaving all his money to us. Why should he stipulate that his will wasn't to be opened for a year? I don't know. But that wasn't the only stipulation. His body was to be brought back and buried in the family vault. His old trusted servant, Christopher, you saw him a moment ago, uh -huh. was to accompany the body, and we were to take care of Christopher. Three months later, we received word of Uncle Caleb's death. What happened to the will? It was sent to Dirk Richards, our lawyer. He was to keep it until it was time for it to be opened and read. As far as you know, you three are the only beneficiaries. Yes. There's no one else. Uh, are you thinking that... You little sneak. Wait, please. Christopher just told me where you went tonight. What are you trying to pull anyway? If you think you can find out what is, what's in the will that way, you may... Just phoned the house tonight. Didn't Christopher tell you that, too? He wanted us all to come to his office. You weren't here when he phoned. Uh, how obliging of him to phone the minute I'm out of the house. Oh, Wade, stop talking like a fool. I'm no fool, Sybil. And don't you forget it. You couldn't have by any chance been in Dirk's office tonight before I got there, could you? Of course not. Where were you? Who are you, anyway? I'm a detective. A, a detective? That's right. Where were you tonight? Wait a minute. What is this, anyway? What's the matter? Are you sure you don't already know? You better tell me where you were tonight, Stone. Why, I, I went to the theater. Who with? With? Why, nobody. I, I went alone. Your cousin George wasn't with you. No, he wasn't with me. As a matter of fact, George was dining tonight with Dirk Richards. Now, look here, Brad. You'd better tell me the truth or you're going to get in trouble. Serious trouble. I know what I'm doing, Mac. You'd better know. I've always trusted you, and I've always gone along with you when nobody else would, but murder is a serious business. This time, I don't like it. Take it easy, Mac. I reported the murder, didn't I? Yeah, that's just it. You reported it, all right. I may be a bullheaded cop, but I wasn't born yesterday. You report a murder. The body's in a guy's office upstairs. Now, what were you doing up there anyway? And how did you happen to find the body? Somebody else was there, a third person, somebody you're shielding, unless... Unless what, Mac? <laughs> unless I killed Richard. Are you kidding, Mac? Well... Cut it out. Look, a guy's been murdered. You want the killer, don't you? Of course. Okay, I'm trying to get him for you. Sure, I'm holding out on you, but I've got a reason. What? There was a third person there last night. But I don't think it was the murderer. 
There are three other people who qualify just as well or better. Who are these people? You'll find out soon enough. I could arrest you for concealing evidence, Brad. Go ahead. But if you want this killer, you better listen to me. If I told you who was there last night, you'd have to make an arrest, and probably you'd get a conviction. But the murderer would still be on the loose. Give me a free hand, and I promise to bring in the right one. Now, does that make sense? Well, maybe. Okay. Now then, did you go through the lawyer's office? Sure. All of his papers and files? Well, not yet. We brought all that stuff over here to my office. Those filing cabinets over there belong to him. Good. I want to have a look at the files. Now, wait a minute, Brad. You can't take anything out of there. I said look, Mac. Oh. What are you looking for? A file on a guy named Caleb Stone. Well, what's he got to do with this? Nothing. He's dead. But he made a will that Richards, the lawyer, was keeping. A will? Yeah. Oh, here's the file I want. Pertaining to Caleb Stone. I'm watching you, Brad. Don't try to take anything out of that folder. Don't worry, Mac, I won't. You better not. Keep your shirt on. There's nothing in this folder. Yes, sir. Hello, Christopher. I beg your pardon, sir. Whom did you wish to see? I want to see you. See me, sir? I want to talk to you. But I don't know whether I... It's okay. You know, there was a murder last night. A lawyer named Dirk Richards. I, I, yes, sir. I, I heard Miss Stone and her brother talking about Mr. Richards' death. You brought Caleb Stone's body back to the States, didn't you? Yes, sir. How long did you work for the old man, Christopher? About 15 years. You must have known him pretty well. Yes, sir. I, I believe, if I may say so, that I knew him as well as anyone in the world. He was a strange man with few friends. Did you ever hear him mention any trouble he might have had with his brother? Oh, no, sir. He wasn't a demonstrative man, but uh, I believe he was quite fond of his brother. He often expressed sorrow at the great distance that separated him from his only living relative. I'm sure that's why he wished his body to be buried here. And yet the two brothers never wrote to each other. Didn't that ever strike you as peculiar? Yes, sir, it did. But then, as I say, Mr. Caleb Stone was a strange man. If he had not loved his only relatives, why would he have left his entire fortune to them? I'm just beginning to wonder if he did, Christopher. But he left the will, sir. What did it say? Do you know? Does anybody know? Why, why, no way. It wasn't to be opened until a year after his death. You've been here for a couple of months now, haven't you, Christopher? Yes, sir. You like it here? Why, yes, I like it very much. How do the brother and sister and cousin get along? I don't quite understand, sir. But they seem to like each other. Well, I hardly think it's my place. Look, Christopher, there's been a murder. Do they like each other or not? Well, sir, I, I don't want to cause any trouble for them, but, uh, well, the truth of the matter is that they don't get along very well. What seems to be the trouble? Oh, nothing serious, sir. It's just that there are continual quarrels and jealousy. You see, both Mr. Wade and Miss Sybil seem to resent Mr. George's presence here. In fact, sir, I might almost say that... Uh, Christopher, where's... Who are you? Brad Runyon. The detective? Uh-huh. That will be all, Christopher. Yes, sir. What do you want here? Can't you guess? You mean it's about Dirk's murder? Yeah. Your cousin Wade said you had dinner with Dirk last night. Wade told you that? Yes. He was lying. I, I haven't seen Dirk in over a week. I didn't have dinner with him. He's trying to pin Dirk's murder on me. Why would he want to do that? I'll tell you why. Because he hates me. They've always hated me, both he and Sybil. Why don't you ask Wade where he was last night? Hey, Mr. George. Mr. George, come quickly. What's the matter, Christopher? Hey, it's Mr. Wade. What about Wade? He's lying in the hall outside his bedroom door. Dead. 
We just got the medical examiner's report, Brian. What does it say? Poison, cyanide, just enough to be deadly. We found traces of it in the glass in the bathroom. If it was murder, whoever did it knew more about poison than the ordinary person. Yeah? How do you figure that? Well, the doc says cyanide in a large dose isn't usually fatal because the stomach won't hold it. But a small amount on the side of a glass like the one we found is always deadly. Now, look here, Brad. You know as well as I do that this murder has something to do with the murder of that lawyer, Richards. That makes two. We gotta do something. Okay, Mac. You can start by having one of your men check through the old files to see what he can dig up on a guy named Caleb Stone. What's this Caleb Stone got to do with all this? I think he's got a lot to do with it. Mm. Hello, Sweeney. See what you can find in your old files on a guy named Caleb Stone. Stone. Yeah, that's right. Boy, this is no joke, Brad. They're already screaming for me to make an arrest. I told you I'd get the murderer, and I will. Well, it's a sense that whoever put that poison in Wade's water glass was somebody in the house. Uh-huh. I think it was a sister, Sybil. Why Sybil? Why not Cousin George? Or the old butler, Christopher? Don't jump too quickly, Mac. Once we know what the motive is, we'll have the murderer. The motive must have been the will. Whoever killed the lawyer took it. Then why kill Wade? No, Mac. It isn't the will that was the motive. But it might be something that's in the will. The will is gone. Yeah, and that's the part that doesn't fit. If one of the remaining heirs was trying to kill off all the others to inherit old Caleb's estate, he wouldn't have to kill the lawyer or steal the will. Oh, I see what you mean. There must be something else behind it. Takes you a little while, Mac, but you always get there. Hello. Oh, yes, yeah, Sweeney. Yeah? Good. Okay, Sweeney, thanks. Did he find anything? I'll say he did. Caleb Stone was wanted for murder 25 years ago, but he skipped out of the country and nobody has seen him since. You're really going to mess things up this time, Mac. You just let me worry about that. You'd come clean with me from the beginning. I could have made the arrest sooner. If you arrest the sister now, Mac, the real murderer may go free. I think the sister is the real murderer. Uh, the house is pretty quiet. Maybe no, nobody's here. Probably in bed. No, oh, somebody's coming. Mr. Runyon. Yeah, this is Lieutenant McKenzie of the police, Miss Stone. Oh, oh, come in. Had something else happened? And what did you think might happen? Oh, why, well, I, I don't know, but since Wade's murder, I, oh, I'm frightened, Mr. Runyon. I don't blame you. What do you mean by that? You killed Richards, didn't you? Oh, no, no. And then no. you poisoned your brother so we'd think he'd murdered the lawyer and committed suicide. Oh, no, I didn't. Why would I kill Dirk? Because you weren't mentioned in your uncle's will. You had to get that will and destroy it, so you killed the lawyer. Then you killed your brother. The next one is Cousin George, isn't it, Miss Stone? Then all the money will go to you, will or no will. Oh, no, I tell you, that's not true. I don't want the money. I've never wanted it. Why not? Because it's cursed. There's a curse on all of us. I've I felt it for years. I've known it ever since I found that note. That's why I never told anybody. What note? What are you talking about? I found it in Father's papers after he died. I never told anybody. Until I showed it to George tonight. Who was it from? It was from Uncle Caleb to my father. And it must have been written years ago, soon after Uncle Caleb went to Australia. Where is the note? Here it is. Dear brother, you are so kind I shall not forget. You had... Best remember, too, that under a curse such as this, even the dead won't die. What does that mean? Don't you see it? We're cursed, the whole family. And my uncle knew it. I always felt there was something. The fact that my father never spoke of Uncle Caleb. The fact that we never heard from him. And all these years it's been there, hovering over us, waiting to strike. And now it has. These murders. It's in our blood, don't you see? I was afraid that George, that he... What? Well, if he knew about it, he might realize that he... That he was insane. Yes. What 
My uncle and my father must have known that this murderous trade was in our blood. Hey, if that's true, Brad, it'll explain about Caleb Stone. Yeah, maybe. Well, I'm sorry, Miss Stone, but I've... Hold it, to... Mac. Come with me. Hey, what's the matter with you? I told you Mac. I was gonna... We've got to get out of here quick. But you We'll talk... see you later, Miss Stone. All right, Mr. Rennie. Now, what's the idea, Brad? Don't be a sap. That note explains something, all right, but it's not what you think. What? It's the last four words, Mac. The dead won't die. I'll well, get it. You will. Come on. Where to? The cemetery. Cemetery? Why? I want to have a look in the Stones family vault. <laughs> Ideas. What's the idea coming out here? I should have grabbed the dame and taken her in. Take your time, Mac. You'll make an arrest sooner than you think. This place gives me the creeps. Graveyard is bad enough in the daytime, but the middle of the night, oh, it's too much. <laughs> You're not afraid of ghosts, are you? Oh, well, of course not. I hope ghosts are all over and have to worry about. What do you think we'll find here? I'm not sure, but... Wait, huh? Closed. Looks like somebody else has the same idea. If there's anybody in there. Come on. Shine your light inside when I push the door open. Okay. I don't see anybody. Can't be. Shine that light. I wound up with a coffin guard. Okay. Whoever was here must have... What's wrong? I tripped over something here on the floor. Brad. Brad, it's a body. Look. Yeah. He's the cousin, George Daniels. That's a knife sticking in his back. But how to find the light on the coffin? You want to find out? Look there, Brad. That coffin next to the bottom. It's been pulled out and the lid's been tampered with. You're right, Mac. Caleb Stone's coffin. May I handle these plans? What for? I want to open the coffin. <laughs> now, give me the light. I was right. About what? Look here in the coffin, Mac. I don't see anything in there. That's just it, Mac. Caleb Stone's coffin is empty. <laughs> Quick, Mac, come on. Listen, hurry. We may be too late. And now, you, you're next. Ah, ah, drop that knife or I'll shoot. Drop it, Caleb. What? He's a madman. He was going to kill me, too. You mean he's the uncle? Yeah, he's Caleb Stone, all right. That's why the coffin was empty. Sure, Mac. There never was a body in that coffin. It was a good act, Caleb, but it's time for the curtain. You've done all the killing you're going to. Another minute and I would have finished. Twice I've been cheated, twice, do you hear? But all those years I waited and waited. You lied about your brother, didn't you, Caleb? You hated him, didn't you? Yes. But I didn't kill that man 25 years ago. My brother killed him, her father. He shot him down in cold blood, took the money and framed me. Oh, he was smart, all right. He did a good job. I didn't have a chance. No. Oh, yes, he did. My brother was a fiend, a devil, and nobody ever knew. I wanted to kill him, but I didn't have time. The police were after me, but I got away. I went to Australia, and I waited. I waited for years. I was afraid to come back, and then he died. He cheated me. And so you decided to take it out on the rest of the family? Yes. What about the money and the will? The money? I had no money. And the will... The will deeded only hate to the name of Stone. Why did you kill Richard? That meddling lawyer. He couldn't let well enough alone. He must have suspected something, opened the will, and discovered the truth. She told me he'd called. While she was upstairs getting ready to see Richard, I left and went to his office and killed him. I thought she'd be suspected. What did you do with the will? The will? 
Oh, yes, yes, of course. I have it here in my pocket. Give it to me. Certainly. Here you are. <laughs> He's got a gun. Well, oh, nice shooting, Brad. Yeah. Is, is he dead? Yeah, he's dead all right. You got him right in the heart, Brad. Shouldn't have gone for his gun. No, but he saved the state a lot of money. He'll have a cheap funeral, too. What do you mean, cheap? He's already got a coffin, Mac, remember? He brought it all the way from Australia. I spend my life in getting into trouble and getting out of it. But at the same time, I generally manage to get some other people in and out of trouble, too. Be seeing you again. So long.